And, and one of the people that, that I respect the most, I call him, uh, if you're familiar with astrology, he's, he's like that shining star. He can get you back. Discovered Kobe and, and Jerry West, and Jerry is with us right now. And Jerry, I, I, I appreciate you being here with us today, uh, my friend, because this is a, I know this is a tough day for all of us, but especially for you because you were the one that discovered Kobe. Well, Jim, you know, I really didn't discover Kobe, okay? There was, you know, he was a, a great young uh, high school player in that time. It wasn't in vogue to draft players like that. And um, as I say, it was part of the process of getting here. His agent, Norn Tellum, and myself were able to, um, working through the draft uh, till he became a Laker. And... Um, those were very exciting moments for us to get a young, charismatic kid uh, like him. But more importantly, a, a very unique talent. And um, it was the um, um, start of a long, I don't say process, but the start of a long friendship and re working relationship. And uh, to hear this news this morning, uh, frankly, at first I was shocked. And then after a while, it really sunk, I sunk in. And, you know, to see the transformation of him from a 17-year-old kid who used to spend time at my house with me to my son Ryan driving him around because he couldn't drive. He couldn't even sign a contract because he was too young. Uh, to him, the constant questions about the NBA, uh, wanting me to go to a gym with him to watch him work out and maybe make suggestions to him. It was more than, I really felt like a surrogate father to him. And then as his career blossomed and uh, you know he started to, established this an enormous reputation as a player and, and also filled with accomplishments. But his charisma on top of it uh, was something that most great players don't have, and he had it. But uh, to wake up to this news, this has been one of the most horrible days of my life. Uh, I, felt like, I felt like I've lost a son, and... Um, frankly not doing very well. Yeah, Jerry, I know we, uh, there's only a few people that have had a, a really intimate relationship with, with Kobe, and, and you are one of them because you were with him there through the good, the bad, and the indifferent. Well, Jim, you know, it wasn't all rosy. Uh, it never is, and particularly for someone like him who was so anxious for success. Um, and, you know, I remember, there's one personal thing I remember. I, I said to him after a game uh, where, where he played, and I said, man, you look a little tired tonight. And he said to me, he said, I just proposed to my wife, uh, to hopefully my new wife. And I'll never forget that moment. It was in the locker room right after a game. And, you know, to see him get married, have children, and change a career so drastically to where he was making a difference in this world, not as an athlete, but as a very bright person. His interest in women, in terms of his basketball academy, uh, the pride that he took into those things, and to see that all taken and his family, my God, I just, I, I, there's going to have to be some really strong people out there supporting them because this is, this is the worst news you could ever get. Uh, I know it's difficult, uh, Jerry. I, and you knew, knew him better uh, than, than anyone. And the other thing is, he came to you for advice, not only about basketball, but just about growing and maturing into a young man responsible to his family and to the community as well, didn't he? Well, Jim, you know, as I say, I don't want to go around saying that I was responsible for his life, period. I don't, because that would be grossly unfair. But the thing that I will share with you is how 
to me, uh, the things I saw him, the maturity that I saw him grow into. Uh, I saw him grow up. I saw him deal with, you know, press that was negative at times because and he played the game with a flair. And any time you play the game with a flair, you're susceptible to making mistakes. But I was his biggest supporter. But also, I, I had some ser- very serious talks with him about how he needs to change his game a little bit to be able to accommodate himself with his other teammates. But uh, I think the thing that uh, brought me great joy was to watch him with his wife and his kids. Uh, It was truly inspiring for me to see this. He lived in a world of uh, testosterone, okay, as all athletes do. And for for him to be able to separate the athletic accomplishments with his personal accomplishments and the things that he was doing to have a successful career. This was a brilliant kid. This wasn't some athlete who just happened to be a great basketball player. He was more than that. And um, I, Jim, this is, Yeah, I know. It's going to take a long time for me to get over this one. Jerry, why do you, why do you think he is st- still so beloved today, even though he's been out of the game for a couple of years? Jim, I, again, I think players that play the game with a flair, okay? You see a lot of great players who, um, you know, look at Abdul-Jabbar's career, okay? And he just had a completely different personality. And you could arguably say he had the greatest career of anyone. But yet people, I don't think, will equate and look at him the same way they do, uh, do as Irvin Johnson. He played the game with a flair. He had a, a great vibe with the fans. He still does. He's bigger than life. And Kobe's legacy, that it will remain forever. His impact will remain forever. And, uh, but my God, I just feel so horrible for his family. Oh, my goodness. Uh, And for as great a basketball player as he was, Jerry, and I've said many times, and I've heard you say it too, he... uh, he was a better family man, a husband and father. Man, he, he loved those ladies in his home. Well, as I say, all you had to do was see him with them. That's all you had to do. And I once kidded him one time when, after he had a couple of girls. And, and again, I, I didn't, I was not, I'm not someone who goes around and communicates with players, or ex-players, okay? I don't think that's my position in this world. Um, I just know the admiration that I have for the players that have really achieved something special, but sometimes the ones who have it. But with him, as I say, he had a little extra gold dust sprinkled on him, and uh, I was kidding him. I said, you're not a man. I said, you have all these women in your life. And, um, of course, he laughed at it. But uh, to think that I won't see him, to think his family won't see him, um, people who loved him, People admired him. Uh, it just got awful. He was a gift, wasn't he, Jerry? Uh, Jim, he was definitely a gift. Yes, he was. And uh, as I say, you never know when it, when a kid is going born what it's going to be. And even though he was the son of a basketball player, he just hard to imagine his excellence, his, you know, people call it Mamba mentality. I I don't, I don't. Um, He was just born with an incredible desire to win, and it had nothing with his mentality. He just wanted to win at all costs, 
and he would win at all costs. He laid his line on the line, his life on the line every night when it come to, came to winning. Losing was not in his vocabulary, and with a lot of great players, but he just had this persona that um, very few have, a lot desire, and a lot will never have, even though they've, they've had great careers. Hopper is with us now. She's on the Grammys red carpet, and Brittany, I'm, I'm guessing this really, this news is so shocking. And so many people that had been thinking what this night was going to be one thing, now such a different mood, I'm sure. Exactly. I mean, uh, many of us are just shaking out here, to be honest. It what started off as a joyous morning has turned into just a devastating, shocking red carpet here at the Grammys. I can tell you that it felt like a wave like it started coming through the carpet word of of this happening and then producers starting to call us and it's just been absolutely tragic take a look at this carpet now i can tell you that as celebrities are starting to get here it uh it, everyone's in complete shock everyone is devastated everyone is just completely saddened by this legend's death also, we are at the Staples Center. The Grammys are held at the Staples Center. And obviously, this, this was Kobe's home, away from home, for so many years. So just unbelievably tragic. And as more celebrities come through here, we are going to get reaction. And uh, you know, this, this changes the game. This, this just changes the game today here at the Grammys. Um, again, I'm still, I'm still shaking um, over, over all of this. Uh, we, will, we will bring you much more coming up later, later this evening. For now, we're live at the Staples Center. I'm Brittany Hopper. Back to you. It's where Kobe Bryant has been a resident for many, many years. Uh, we're going to see if we can join her now live on the air. Joy, are you able to hear us okay? Yeah, I hear you. I mean, this is just devastating. I mean, his neighbors are stopping. They're saying we can't believe this happened. We have had a few fans who have shown up here already, and I want to show you over to the left-hand side. A couple came and just placed um, a dozen roses right here in front of the subdivision where Kobe Bryant lives. Obviously, they're not letting anyone in. Right now, we're just seeing, um, we've seen three Newport police cars that have gone through here. We don't know if they're coming in because of this or if they're here for another reason. But really, this is just devastating for so many people. I just talked to a man um, who was standing across the street who lives in the neighborhood. He said, I, I just had to come here. I woke up. I heard the news. I had to come and just be here to almost pay respects. He was wearing Kobe's um, old high school jersey, of all things. And then another man was here wearing the number eight. I mean, Kobe Bryant is just as synonymous with the Lakers as anybody else is and really in NBA history and uh, you know I spent several years working for ESPN and covering Kobe and interviewing him numerous times in the locker room or there at the facility and he is just I mean he's a force right he is a basketball force and and a human being too so we have to remember that he's not only just Kobe Bryant the basketball player he is Kobe Bryant the husband he is Kobe Bryant the father he is Kobe Bryant the friend so there are a lot of people who are mourning his loss those who worked with him in fact I was um, messaging a few moments ago with his former head coach Mike Brown he just says he's in disbelief that it's just a very sad sad day not only for Lakers but but for the world of the NBA and fans and everybody who loved this man. And, and so many of us did. He was legendary. He was one of the greatest players of all time. He was one of the wo most well-known athletes of all time um, and somebody who has transformed Los Angeles sports, to say the least. Joy, thank you so much for that live report. From I just don't have a lot to say. I, uh, the news is just devastating to everybody. Uh, who knew him, known him a long time, and, uh, you know, he, he just, he, mean, he means a lot to me, obviously, um, you know, he was such a great opponent, you know, um, it's what you want in sports, um, he had that, that DNA that, um, that very few athletes can ever have, you know, the, the Tiger Woods and the Michael Jordan's, you know, um, it's funny. I, uh, I've, I was getting to know him more since he retired, you know. Um, yeah, this is this is a tough one. I don't. Uh, I mean, we have to go play. Uh, 
Uh, I mean, the news is just so devastating for, for Vanessa and, and, his, and his family. And um, there's just so many people he touched.